Today, I'm going to teach you guys how to do these little chromatic aberration on the edges. I've been doing this for quite some time now in my videos. Uh, I think I started when I had the FX30 and I've been just, you know, making it my kind of style. And it's probably prominent on the A6700 review because some people loved it. Some people hated it. And like they were throwing comments and I'm like, let me just play around with my videos. This is kind of like my creative outlet. But for everyone who wants to know how it's done, this is the tutorial. It's going to be a quick one. Let's head into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you guys how to do this. So I have prepared a few clips and let's just say this is your completed node tree. We're just going to add a node all the way at the end, the right hand side of your node tree because all the effects like halation glow, this prism blur effect has to be at the end. So it's after the look you've created in DaVinci Resolve. And then on the effects library, uh, if you don't have this, it's just you hit this effects tab and it should pop up. And then from here on, we're just gonna go prism blur, drag that in there. As you can see with the default effect, it's blurring your image and it's giving that prism effect, the RGB splitting effect. Blur strength at zero. And we're just gonna keep this in here. And then the aberration strengths, we're gonna go all the way to one. And then the vignette size and the vignette sharpness, up to you to decide. I don't usually touch these. Now from here, let's do aberration distance and aberration strength. You can see kind of like, how it affects your image. So what I like to do is put that strength all the way to 100%. And then we're just going to keep this at a minimum. I usually hover over like 0 0.005 all the way to 0 0.020 because this is 0.20. You can see in her fingers that there's a little bit of that chromatic aberration prism, prism blur effect. And then it's right here as well. You can see how it affects the image. Now on this shot, we're already using the Helios 44 2, and it's already giving us a lot of character. But again, I just wanted that chromatic aberration on the corners. One thing though, to make it just the corners because it's deteriorating our image right in the middle, as you can see, it's kind of just like, you know, messing it up just a tiny bit. We want that sharpened. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the power window create that circle and make sure you're on the power window selection so that you can see this circle. And we're just gonna make it as big as we want. And then this is the kind of gradation tool, the softening of the edges. And we're just gonna make it like this and make sure to invert it. This is to invert it because right now the, hey, uh, the prism blur is right in the middle. And if we invert it, it's gonna be in the corners and that's that. Now, if you, again, if you want something pretty harsh, we can just do this aberration distance and you can see the purples and greens are popping up on the corners. Again, it's a little bit too much. It's up to you of how much you wanna to apply to your videos, but use it sparingly like I have. There's another way to do this if you want full control and I'll show you how to do that as well. We're just gonna turn this off and then right click on, not in your node tree, but in this space right here in the empty space, right click, add node and we're gonna do splitter. And we're also gonna add node combiner. And then from here, we're gonna drag this all the way to here. I'm gonna delete this. And we're just gonna create three other nodes. Just gonna lift this up. Three other nodes. And then this, this. Connect it here, connect it there, and connect it here. Okay. And then lastly, connect that here. So what this, no stuff is doing. This one is the splitter. So you can see that there's three outs on this node, meaning that the top is the red channel, 
the middle is the green channel, and then the third one is the blue channel. So we're just gonna name them R G B. And again, the name of this effect is RGB split. So this is exactly what we're doing. We're splitting apart the RGB channels. So from here on, we're just gonna do directional blur and you can see right away that it's splitting the cyan and the red with this one. And if we do the same with the greens, it's gonna split the purples and the greens and with the blue, it's going to be splitting the blues and the yellows. Now, again, this is a little too much, so we are just going to play around with it just so that we can see that effect. On here, you can see that the blue and the yellow is already splitting by the corners. Again, a little too much. I'm just gonna play with it. Okay, I, I kind of like that already. And then with the greens, we can do, I don't know, maybe more. Uh, it's too much. Okay, I kind of like that. And then with the reds, I'm just kind of looking at the corner. Okay, now again, everything is blurred out in the middle and we're just gonna use a power window. It's up to you, like again, we're splitting the RGB channels and you can do whatever you want with them. You can put all power windows. If you really want to kind of just make one power window, you can make this a compound node right here and it becomes its own node. And then what you can do is add that power window. Same thing as what we did with the prism blur. And that's it. Now we just applied the RGB split in the corners. You can just tweak this to your preference. And that's pretty much it. So the spec ad that we created, I did color it as well. And I've used the prism blur heavily on this because I wanted to make the audience feel what Billy is kind of going through, kind of like just like, you know, that suffocation and like you're, you're not really thinking right and you're groggy after, you know, being waterboarded. Uh, and then from here on, again, we're just going to create that effect. And here, I think I was a little bit more, I applied a little bit more, but on here, we're just going to use his face as a focal point. That's a little bit too much. Maybe 20, 20 is okay, yeah. With this one, you can kind of just emulate that panic state. And I think it's a pretty cool effect, if especially if you use it for narratives. You don't just use it for, you know, it looks cool and stuff. You can use it for practical uses as well. We'll just copy the prism blur right here. That's a little too much. Maybe we'll do 0 0.010. And I'm happy with this shot. For this shot, I'm just trying to redirect the audience going into the middle where the actual subject is. And then same with this one. And that's a little too much, 0.10. That's enough. And I just wanted to lead the viewer right in the middle of the buildings and this pathway right here and then the rest is kind of like you know extra and it just has a little bit of character so i shot this on the a6700 and i have the sigma 16 millimeter on this one and with with those photography lenses it's usually like clean it's sharp and if you want to add a little bit of a character Prism Blur is a really great choice. So it's as easy as that. I know I said it's gonna be a quick tutorial, but I wanted to share the thought process behind these effects and why it could be useful as well in narrative work and maybe commercial work. You can use it to elevate your story. Just don't do it way too much or else it's going to be a little bit tacky. But again, it depends on the project, it depends on your style, if that's what you're going for. Go for it. There's no rules in filmmaking. Well, there are rules in filmmaking, but rules are meant to be broken 
be creative, experiment. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below or message me on Instagram. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.